This is session three of operations management. For faith and learning, we're going to talk about Moses. And Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and Israel, his people, and that God, the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. So then in Exodus 18.7, it says, So Moses went down to meet his father-in-law and bowed and kissed him, and they asked each other about their well-being, and they went into the tent. So everything's great. You get down to verse 13. And so it was on the next day that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood before Moses from morning till evening. So when Moses' father-in-law saw what he did for the people, he said, What is this thing that you are doing for the people? Why do you alone sit and all the people stand before you from morning until evening? So then... Um, Jethro came up with a solution, and that's in verse 20 to 22. And you shall teach them the statutes and the laws, and show them the way in which they must walk, and the work they must do. Moreover, you shall select from all people able men, such as fear God, and men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifty, rulers of ten, and let them judge the people at all time. Then it will be that every great matter they shall bring to you, but every small matter they shall themselves judge. So will it be easier for you, for they will bear the burden with you. So um, so here's the children of Israel org chart. So you see there's rulers of ten, rulers of hundreds, rulers of uh, fifty, rulers of thousands, and Moses. So... You know, the way I look at it is you have here Moses up at the top, and then there's all these people who are rulers of thousand um, that report to Moses. And then under that, under these rulers of thousands are rulers of hundreds and rulers of fifty. So a senior person could handle ten families or ten groups of uh, ten. And a more junior leader might only be able to handle 50. I mean, so they would only have five people reporting to them. So there, there you have the Children of Israel org chart. Um, and so what would happen is um, down here, these 10 families, um, when they had an issue among themselves, they would go to this ruler. And if, if he could solve it, then it was done. If he couldn't solve it, it would go up to this ruler. And if he couldn't solve it, it would go up to here. And then if he couldn't solve it, it would go up to um, uh, Moses. And you notice I'm saying he, it, today we'd say he or she, but I'm pretty sure that these rulers, most of them were probably, probably men. Um, and that's just the way it was in that culture back then. Um, although there's plenty of evidence of, of, of women leaders in, in the Bible later on, um, there was uh, the, the, uh, the, the judges and, and stuff, that, um, and, and we'll, we'll probably talk about those a little bit later. But uh, there's the uh, Children of Israel org chart. So now we're going to talk about Chapter 6, Process Selection and Facility Layout. Process selection and system design. So we've talked about some of these things. On the left-hand side, you have forecasting, uh, product and service design, and technological change. Those are sort of the drivers. And then um, capacity planning and process selection. They go together. And then on the right-hand side, you have facilities and equipment. You have layout and you have work design. So here's some of the types of processing. Um, so uh, on the left there is the job shop. So um, this is this is really the way it was um, many years ago um, before the industrial resolution, and that's where you know you you have a, a blacksmith and you come in and say, hey, I need a horseshoe made, and they they make you horseshoes. So they're customized goods and services. They're able to handle a wide variety of work. The disadvantages is they're slow, 
high cost per unit complex planning and scheduling. So th this um, th this still happens today. Um, you know, like like you if if you wanted to to um, have some custom cabinets made for your house, that would be um, a, a job shop. Um, if if you wanted to go down to Home Depot and buy some that are are ready made and just having them uh, uh, installed. Um, now you're getting into some of these on the right hand side. So a batch. So this is semi-standardized goods or services. And so, so you, you do a, a bunch of one thing. So the, you, uh, you have some flexibility. It's easy to add or change products or services. You have moderate cost per unit, moderate scheduling complexity. Um, the next one is repetitive and assembly. So this is this is where um, Henry Ford um, came up with the assembly line, right? So um, there's standardized goods and services, low cost, um, low unit cost, high volume efficiency, low flexibility, high cost of downtime, and then there's there's this last one which is continuous. So this is where you have high standardized goods and services, very efficient, high volume. It's very rigid, lack of variety. It's costly to change and very high cost downtime. So the need for layout planning. So um, the first need is if you have inefficient operations. So if you have... <clears throat> Um, bottlenecks or high cost, you might want to uh, change your layout. Another might be for accidents or safety hazards. Um, so, uh, you know, you, there's the little guy with the hole in the floor. Um, it's like, well, maybe you should change it if, if there's something that could hurt you. Um, if you have changes in product or service design, something new, um, introduction of new products and services, um, and then another reason, if you have um, if you if you have changes in your output volume or your product mix, so you you've been making a bunch of one thing and now you're making something different. Well, you might want to change the layout. If you have changes in methods or equipment, changes in environmental or legal requirements, and um, another another potential is morale problems. Um, you know, I'm standing here in this one spot and it's not very fun. It, if, if we change the layout, it might make that job a little bit better. So the layout design objectives. So the basic objective is to facil facilitate a smooth flow of work, material, and information through the system. So some of the supporting objectives is to facilitate product or service quality, Use workers and space efficiently, avoid bottlenecks, minimize material handling cost, uh, eliminate unnecessary movement of workers or materials, minimize the product time or service um, time, and design for safety. So here's a repetitive processing product layout. Um, and so here you have um, Raw materials are the customer coming in one side and the finished item coming out the other side. So you got station one, station two, station three, station four. So this is where I like to use Chipotle. So you walk into Chipotle and you get to the first station and um, and they ask you, you know, so what do you want? You want a burrito? You want a burrito bowl? You want a salad? You want a... Uh, uh, you know, wh whatever it is you want, they start making it for you. And um, so they do the first l a couple of pieces. They put on your rice, you give you your choice of rice, your choice of beans, your meat. Uh, I like uh, sofritas. I'm, I'm a vegetarian. I like sofritas, which is their um, tofu mix. And then uh, right around there, you get to station two, where they, they, they put the salsa, they put the... Um, the guacamole, they put whatever it is. And then, and then you, you get to the third station and um, they ask you, you know, do you want a drink? Do you want um, it, uh, chips? And then the, the fourth station, they, um, you know, you go ahead and pay for it. And, um, and then you get your meal. 
So that's an example of this product layout where the customer is going through, through the stations. Um, so you can use this for um, repetitive or continuous. So here's an example of non-repetitive process uh, layouts. And this is, this is probably more like uh, you registering at Washington Adventist University for a class. And that is, you go to one department and, and, and it goes, and it depends on what you're doing, depends on which order you're going through. So you, um, you, you know, there's, there's all these different things that you can go um, through. So you might go to um, financial services, you might go to, and, and you know, for distance learning, you may be making phone calls, sending emails, uh, going online, but you're you're going between different departments, and it's it depends on your specific situation, which order you go in, and what kinds of things you do. So fixed position layout. So a fixed position layout. This is where you're working on something, and you actually have to go to it. So let, a dam is a good example. If you're working on the dam, you don't move the dam through the um, through your assembly line. You're going to take your tools, and you're going to go to the spot on the dam that needs to be worked on. Um, the same with like a ship. If you're you're at sea and you need to work on the engine room, you're going to go to the engine room. If you, if you need to work, whatever's broken on the ship, you're at sea, you go to that spot and you fix it. So combination layouts. So um, there's, there's, you can use some combination of these layouts, hospitals, supermarkets, shipyards, they use this combination. Um, and then there's some organizations that are moving away from process layout, and, and there's a couple of options. One is cellular manufacturing um, and flexible manufacturing. So um, I think that uh, Harley-Davidson is an example of cellular manufacturing where they will take a motorcycle and have a group of people um, pretty much build the motorcycle from the ground up. Um, so they do the whole thing. So that's, uh, that's an example of a cellular manufacturing. And then service layout. So service layouts can be um, categorized as product, process, or fixed position. So um, service layout requirements are somewhat different due to such factors as customer contact, and degree of customization. So if you go to Chipotle, um, you know the customer contract. That's that's really a, a combination service layout. But you have two options there. You can either go through the line, or you can call it in, and or fax it in, or go go. Uh, I think they fax it in, or you can go on their website, and and get your order, and you just come pick it up. So that's the same product with different customer contact. So some common service layouts, warehouse, retail, office, line balancing. So the process of assigning tasks to workstations so that the workstations are approximately equal time requirements. So the goal is to obtain task grouping that represent approximately equal requirements since this uh, minimizes idle time along the line. Uh, why is line balancing important? It allows you to use labor and e equipment more efficiently and to avoid fairness issues that arise when one workstation must work harder than the other. Cycle time is the maximum time allowed at each workstation to complete a set of tasks in the unit. Um, and it establishes the output rate of the line. So cycle time equals operating time per day di divided by desired output rate. And then the output rate equals operating time per day divided by cycle time. So they're, they're the same formula in, in different, different ways of looking at it. 
So how many workstations do you need? So you take the required number of workstations um, is a function of desired output rate and our ability to combine tasks into a workstation. So the theoretically minimum number of workstations is um, the sum of the time divided by cycle time. So, um, so the theoretical number of workstations um, and the sum of the task times. So here's a precedence diagram. So a diagram that shows elemental tasks and their precedence requirements. So A um, takes one-tenth of a minute, B takes one minute, C takes seven-tenths of a minute, uh, D takes five-tenths of a minute, and E takes two-tenths of a minute. So the positional weight of A so the, so you can uh, this with a precedence um, so the positional weight is a plus b plus d plus e so c is not part of a's positional weight because see it it's not part of it so that's 1.8 okay this is a uh, problem 2 it's on page 277 or 281 so depending on which version uh, which uh, edition you have um, of the textbook. So a manager wants to assign tasks to workstations as efficiently as possible and achieve an hourly output of three, 33 and one-third units. Assume the shop works a 60-minute hour. Assign the tasks as shown in the company precedence time. Times are in minutes to so the workstation using the following rules. In the order of uh, most following tasks. So the um, so the first one is the order of most following tasks, and the tie tiebreaker is greatest positional weight. Um, we're not going to do B, and the C is what is the efficiency. Um, so um, th there's an example problem um, on page 273 or 268. Um, and so uh, here you have, um, let me just do this, A is uh, 1.4, B is 0.5, C is 0.6, so you see how that goes. So the question is, um, uh, you, you, you have to do some problems here to calculate you know which which pieces go together. So um, I'll go through this um, in a little more detail. If we were in a classroom, I would actually divide you into groups and have you solve this. Um, but uh, this is this is the problem. Um, so here's the answer. Um, so uh, the uh, for two a. The uh, task time, uh, so you have uh, down here, 1.4 is A. So this is the first station right here. And then 2 is B and E. So these two are grouped together as one station. The next one, 3, is um, D, C, and F. So these three are all grouped together. And then the last one is these two. So that's how you would solve that. And then the answer, what is the efficiency? So it's the efficiency equals 100% minus percent idle time. So you take all of these, you add them up, um, and you get 1.2 for the idle time. Your efficiency, um, your percent idle time ends up being 16.67%. Um, so your cycle time is 1.8 units per minute. Um, and you, your cycle time equals the actual bottleneck station time. So your bottleneck station time uses 1.8 minutes. So it ends up being um, that's that's 
those those two match 1.8 minutes so your efficiency is 83.33 percent so chapter 6 summary um, chapter 6 talks about process selection technology process strategy facilities layout and then designing product layout which is line balancing so that's uh, chapter 6